everyone. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I love that song, Everything is Holy Now. That's just one of my, my very favorites. I always have to collect myself so that I can speak after listening to that and hearing it. I'm glad we didn't try to sing it today. <sighs> Take a deep breath. <sighs> I, you know, I'm going to let you in on a little behind the scenes thing that happened this morning. First of all, Donna comes in and she's not feeling great, having a little bit of a stomach issue going on. And then just minutes before we're about to get on stage, and you know how she always opens for us, you know, she does our greeting, the PowerPoint, everything disappeared. The word, like all of the stuff that's always there just minutes before. So there we were praying back there. I don't know how many of you knew we would do that, but we pray before every service as we're getting ready. And the stuff just disappears. And you know, and she comes back out here and she's like a pro, right? You wouldn't have even known if I hadn't told you that something happened this morning. But that's what we do, right? Life happens and there's a swirl and there may be chaos and stormy and all kinds of stuff. But we are called to be the center, the calm, and the eye of all of that crazy. And I just love when it shows itself here. Not that I wanted something like that to happen this morning, but it's just a testament to who we are and what we do. So Donna took off somewhere. Maybe she's resting. <laughs> but give her a nice pat on the back for, for pulling things off like a pro and for the rest of our team that just keeps on rolling. Shanna and Richard back there, they just keep breathing and, and knowing that all is in divine right order. Ah, so... It's January, it's the first Sunday of the month, of the, of the year, of 2019. How many of you were with us last week for our bull burden ceremony? Did y'all enjoy that? Yeah. Yes, we did a little bit different with the flash paper. It was all very theatrical and very exciting. And just how wonderful to see things, how quickly things can disappear. Right? That we can release whatever is not for our highest and best. In an instant, it can be gone. It can look miraculous. I feel like it's been forever since that happened because after that, it was, that was Sunday. Then Monday, we had a New Year's Eve party, which we planned, by the way, on Saturday. <laughs> it's my dad's 75th birthday, and because his birthday falls on New Year's Eve, we always have a big party, and we hadn't planned anything this year. We had a couple of deaths in the family, and my dad was really sad, and we usually go back and forth over who's going to have the party, and I was not up for it. And they weren't up for it. And he said, but it's my Saturday oh, You know, it feels like we should do something. So Saturday we said, all right, we're going to have a party here. And it came together in two days. I don't know how many people we had, but it was at least 50 with all the kids. And, and it was just fun. There was laughter and joy and music and dancing. And it was just a great time. And so I think, how many of you were here for that? A couple of us. Wow. Yeah. A lot of it was family, but there you were here too. There were a lot of friends, but it was a great time. And so I'm, I'm thankful for, for this space and for all of you who made my dad's 75th birthday. Such a memorable one. So there's all of that. So let's catch up. So what are we doing here? It's a new year. It's a whole, it's new themes. It's all new everything. And you see, we've got a new sanctuary space for those of you who haven't been for a while, but it's been renewed and I think that's all part of the newness and, and the excitement of what we have going forward. And bookstore. the bookstore, yes, the bookstore looks amazing, doesn't it? So every stand up, if you had anything to do with any of the decorating, with any of the stuff that happened in there. Yes, all of you folks right. stand up. You stand up. You stand up over there. Even Donna, you can stand up. There was design that happened. There was organizing that happened here. There was cleaning. There was painting. There was so many aspects. And it doesn't, it, it has to be a team effort to get as much done as we did in the time that we did. So I'm just so grateful to see this community coming together in such a beautiful way and kicking off 2019 in a, in a wonderful way. So Centers for Spiritual Living, and for those of you who are new, I think uh, we have a couple of people who are fairly new. Um, we're not the only ones. I know some of you found this place maybe by chance, the Center for Spiritual Living, and may think that it's just this cool little place in Ocala. But, and it is a cool little place in Ocala, but we are also part of a much larger movement. There are Centers for Spiritual Living all over the country and several in other parts of the world. And so at the, every year, we set a theme as an organization for what we're going to uh, focus
focus on as an organization. Now, we don't all have to do that. Every center is independent. So sometimes I do the theme, sometimes I don't, sometimes I start with it and I veer off, but this year's theme is spirituality in action. Spirituality in action. And so I'm going to spin off of that theme and I may go with what everybody else is doing. I may do my own thing. Who knows? But it will be what we need mm -hmm. and whatever spirit is urging and, uh, and wanting to have out there. So for the first month of the year, the first couple of months, we go back to basics. Like what is this thing we call the science of mind? What is it that we teach here in Centers for Spiritual Living? So today, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to go back to the basics and talk about what is it that we actually believe in Centers for Spiritual Living, which would be a great thing for all those of you who are new to, to really get a, a good handle on what this is all about. So let's get this going, see if this part of the tech is working. Oh, so happy to be here. And, um, and the teaching again, this is called Centers for Spiritual Living, but what we teach here is called the Science of Mind. And I'm not sure that's a great name for it, because while it is a science, it's not just about mind. It really is about spirit and about feeling and heart. So I don't think it's a complete name, but this is the name nonetheless, the Science of Mind. It's not Christian science, it's not Scientology, if you go online and look us up, you might see some crazy stuff, but it has nothing to do with who we are. <laughs> Science of Mind, uh, written, it came from a book written by Ernest Holmes back in the 1920s, uh, which has been updated. Ernest Holmes was a prolific writer, and what this man did was he studied world religions, and he studied philosophy and psychology and science, and really distilled what was the essence of all of those various teachings. No small job, mm -hmm. no small job. You know, I realized as a college freshman in my first, uh, I think it was a physics class, that the things that I was hearing in church on Sunday morning, somehow that there were some similarities in what I was hearing in that physics class and what I was hearing in church. I know that may sound crazy for some of you, but I could see that there were commonalities as well as in the different world religions. They, people may have different words for the thing we call God, but essentially at the heart of all the world great, world's great religions, we are teaching the same thing. And somehow this man was able to distill all of that wisdom. And I remember thinking, I didn't know there was such a thing as science of mind. I didn't know there was anything besides a Christian, Catholic, you know, Jewish, Muslim. I knew about those few things, but I didn't know anything about new thought. And I thought to myself, I would love to pull the common threads, not knowing that I would find that 25 years later that someone had already done it and I could just step into it. How wonderful. <laughs> so anyway, the teaching comes from this, uh, the science of mind, Ernest Holmes, and the declaration of principles that I'm going to share with you, I'm just going to go through each point as kind of an overview of what this teaching is about. And know that throughout the year, we will be hitting different parts of the, the what we believe and the principles of science of mind in much deeper ways. As it applies to particularly spirituality in action, how we show up in the world, right? That's kind of, that's where the rubber meets the road, isn't it? It's wonderful to be spiritual when you're in your house all by yourself and you're doing your morning meditation or you're here where everyone else kind of you, at least you think maybe they think like you we have similar ways of looking at things it's a little different when you're out there in the world right? or when you're with family and people who maybe have a very <coughs> different point of view than you do how do we bring what we know inside our spirituality into the outside world and how do we interact with that world so that we create our best possible experience and, we, and maybe leave this place a little better than we found it. How many of you are up for that? Yeah. So I think for me, that's what this is all about. So I'm very excited about this year's theme. So the very first thing in this Declaration of Principles, and this was published in 1927, I think, in the Science of Mind magazine, which by the way, I'm not sure how many of you know, we have magazines out in the bookstore area Every month there's a new magazine. There are affirmations to go with every day of the month. 
that you can read in the morning and have that be maybe your compass for the day, just a little food for thought. So we've got the Science of Mind magazines back there. But anyway, the Declaration of Belief was first published in the Science of Mind magazine. And the very first one, I'm going to read it. This is the longest one, and it's maybe the toughest one to wrap your mind around. It says, we believe in God, the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Basically, what it is saying is that we believe in the one, oneness, the thing that created everything and all things. It's not just the thing itself. It is the process. It's, it's everything. It's everything. And we are a part of that. There are lots of religions that, that teach this idea of God, and, and on the surface they say God is all there is, but they're very much coming from a place of duality that there is God and then there's us. And I'm not sure how that works. If you say God is all there is, how can we be exempt from that? Mm -hmm. right? Logically, it doesn't make any sense to say that we are anything outside of that. If God is all there is, we have to be part of that. Absolutely. Right? It doesn't make sense otherwise. It does, God, people speak of God being omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Right? all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere at one time. That means God has to be right here, right here, right now, where each one of us are, always, always. Now, we don't always recognize that. We don't always feel that. And for some of us, maybe the word God is the thing that throws us off. Mm -hmm. right? I have lots of atheists in my family. And if I had not found this teaching, I might consider myself an atheist as well because I don't believe in the traditional idea of God, of some being, some super being somewhere on a cloud that's sitting in judgment waiting for you to screw up. Punish you. You know, or punish you, or, or reward you when it's all over for a job well done you know, while you were here. I just, I, and I've never bought into that. I can't even, since I was a little kid, that was my first break with the church, <laughs> was when I had to go to confession and, and pray to a, you know, tell a priest the things that I had done wrong. I thought, why do I have to tell him? Why can't I just go to God myself like I always have? Mm -hmm. It didn't make any sense to me. So anyway, we believe in God. We believe in this. And, and if God is, is not your word, call it the universe. Call it creator. Call it the original cause. Call it energy. Call it whatever feels good for you, what feels authentic for you, what feels right. But know that we are part of something much, much grander, much, much larger. Right? Look at that picture. You know, I've been out there out west to see those magnificent mountains and creations that just take your breath away. You take your breath away. Things that I couldn't dream up in my little human mind, and yet I'm part of this. The same power and presence that created all of that created you and me. We didn't bring ourselves here. Some other power, some other presence breathed life into us and thought it was a good idea mm -hmm. to have one of you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Spirit thought it was a great idea to have Kim in this world and Norma, each one of us, an idea in the mind of God, and we are the logical outcome of that. It's a pretty amazing thing, isn't it? So that's our first principle. It's the first thing that we believe. The second thing, and there is about a dozen of these statements, so I'm going to just, like I said, kind of hit on them a little bit, just give you an overview, and then know that we will go deeper into all of these ideas in the coming months together. But we believe in the incarnation of spirit in everyone and that all people are incarnations of the one spirit. Now, that's a logical uh, conclusion from the first statement, isn't it? If God is all there is, then that means each and every one of us are part of that essence, right? We are each expressions of that divinity of spirit. 
Now that's, that's, it's very easy to say that, and maybe we can know that logically, but when someone cuts you off in traffic, or somebody ticks you off, or you read some other horrible headline in the newspaper of some terrible thing that someone has done to someone else, it, it's, it's, it can be hard to remember that. That we are all, each and every one of us, expressions of divinity. You know, in, in all of our beauty and grandeur and all of our ugliness and, and all of our crazy and all of our wonder and all of it, we are all part, we are all expressions of the divine. You know, so how different would your days go? How different would your life be if every interaction you had with people you were thinking, that is an expression of spirit. That person, they, they may not be behaving very well, or they may not be showing their best side to us is an expression of spirit and God, just like my own. How different would our world be? And isn't this what the great teacher, what Jesus taught? Yes. Yeah. That we are all one in spirit, every single one of us. So this is another big deep one. We're gonna take a lot of time with this idea, okay, spirituality in action. Then, then is the how. Okay, so how, I, I may know this intellectually, but how can I get my, how do I feel that? How do I get to experience that in my day-to-day -day life? Of seeing other people, not just as human beings, and, and that's tough enough in, in and of itself, right? Sometimes to see other people as human beings, but to see them also as divinity, as, as expressions of God. That's big. All right, we believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. So what do we say about energy? How many, any scientists in the room or people familiar with that? It, it, it is never created or destroyed, it just always is, always is. And as we are, never created or destroyed, we have always been. Not in this form, necessarily. This form, this human form, uh, it does have a beginning date and an end date for each one of us. That is one of the things that we all have in common. No matter what kind of background you come from, no matter how much money you have, what your ethnicity is, who your parents were, what your talents are, at the end of the day, <laughs> we are all human beings and we have a start date and an end date for this physical form. Mm -hmm. But the part of us that animates this life, right, the part of us that, that is beyond the physical has always been and always will be. You know, it can't be anything else. It can't be other than that. If we are all God in expression, if we are all part of this, of this magnificent presence, we can't be anything else. Next, oh, I love that part too. <laughs> we believe that heaven is within us and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. Of it. Now other faiths will have you live right or tell you what they think is the right way to live so that you can have the reward of heaven after you release this human body. Okay, we don't, we don't buy into, we don't subscribe to that idea either. We believe that life is what we make it. Amen. Your experience of life is what you choose it to be. Now, many of us don't realize we have choice. Many of us are living life as victims, mm -hmm. not realizing that, that the one thing that can make all the difference in how we see things, how we choose to perceive life is what makes all the difference. I think it, Albert Einstein said, the, the biggest decision we make or the most important decision we make in life is whether we believe in a hostile universe or a friendly universe. Einstein said that. And he said we have a choice about that. Again, many people don't think we have a choice. They grow up in a certain way with certain ideas, certain paradigms of how life is and what it's about, and they think that that's how it is. Yet how many of us were taught to believe in Santa Claus? Yeah. And did we believe that? How many of you believe 
And Santa Claus, right? So you're about seven, eight. I don't know, maybe like my, my grandson, he's, he's, he's 10 and still believes. <laughs> we don't want to burst this bubble, but you know, we believe things that are not necessarily true. Right? Has anyone noticed that for themselves? Yes. That you have believed for maybe long periods of time Absolutely. things that were not true about you. Yeah, we have a whole culture, a whole society that takes, we are all victims. Victims of what? Victims of our own misunderstanding. Victims of our own ignorance. Absolutely. And sometimes that ignorance is willful. Sometimes it's on purpose. Right? I sat with relatives and, and we start talking about you know metaphysics and these ideas and and one relative in particular she says that sounds really great it makes so much sense but uh, I don't know you could be wrong and if you're wrong I could end up burning in hell forever <laughs> so we don't we don't believe that idea either. <laughs> I call those religions that, that's fire insurance. We don't need fire insurance <laughs> in this faith. They're good. We believe that heaven is within us. We carry it with us and we experience it to the degree that we can be in that flow of life. And this is what we're all wanting to do, right? Experience heaven on earth. I think many of us come to spirituality because we have already experienced hell on earth. Amen. <laughs> so now, we, now we're, we're looking for something better. So we're, we're looking to create heaven in our experience for ourselves and for others, for our loved ones. Uh, and I love that picture too because it's a little kid. I just love that. He just looks like he's in such joy. And we can be there anytime we choose to become conscious. We believe the ultimate goal of life to be a complete emancipation from all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. Uh, what do you all think about that one? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Like it? Like yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know. You think it's possible? If everybody becomes conscious, it can of course. Be yeah. How about for ourselves? Yeah, long you know? become. Can I know this? I look at this, I, and I, I study this stuff. You know, I look at this. Can I really believe that at some point in my life I will be free from discord, free from suffering? Can I believe that for myself? Not when I lay, you know, lay let down. this body go aside, but right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. If not, why not? If not, why not? And I think I, I, have, I, I will tell you personally for myself, right? I've started a job, many of you know that, that I started a, a new position back in October. So I'm working two jobs. I'm working here and I'm working at the Peace Building Center. And so there are opportunities for a little bit of chaos. <laughs> there are challenges that have been inherent in this. And, and I'm out in the world in a different way than I had been in a little while. You know, we have a center and people come here. So I'm interacting with people who are already of a certain mindset, who are looking for something and are coming to me. Now I'm out in the world with people who don't necessarily know anything about this stuff, who don't realize they're looking for it. And, and there are some challenges inherent in that. And, and there have been moments in the past couple of months where I sit back and go, wow, look at that. How interesting that is. And I feel myself almost, I don't want to say it's a separation, it is. It but it, is. to some degree, I feel like I am, I am outside of that conflict. I can see it swirling around me. I can see other people getting sucked into it. I see all this drama and stuff, and it's just, mm -hmm. wow, so interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think back on myself, like who I was 10, 20 years ago, and I would have been right in that right swirl. I would have been right in the middle of the drama. I would, I would have been in it. And now I'm just seeing like, wow, I don't have to be in that. So stuff happens, right? Yeah. People still get sick and people die and, and there are the challenges that happen with life. But I don't feel myself getting pulled into the drama and the pain like I used to. Mm -hmm. It's really quite amazing. Is there none of the drama going? You know, I, I Gail just asked if I gave up being a drama queen. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
I think I have. I believe I have. I don't, it, it's no longer my go-to. But it's been a practice. It's a practice. And it starts with, with it, it's a process. Yeah, there's a lot of reflection. There's a lot of internal work that goes on. Right, Socrates said the, the unexamined life is not much living. Not much living. So we spend a lot of time, and I'm, 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 I feel I'm speaking to the choir, yes? Yes. <laughs> That's why you're here. We, we, we take the time, we spend the time to, to think about our lives and be conscious. That's all, that's all it is. That's what this path is about. It's about waking up. It's about being more conscious. It's about being more aware. It's what? If not now, when? If not now, when? If not now, when? Yes. So the emancipation from discord of every nature. If not now, when? Mm -hmm. This is just as possible right now as it is 10 years from now or 50 years from now or whatever. We can get, we can find ourselves and be in that place. Right, right here, right now. Right here. Right now. And if you're 80 years old, you get a push to get there sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Girl said, if you're 80 years old, you get a push to get there sooner. You know, I was wanting a mic out here because I thought some of you might want to add to some of this stuff. <laughs> Mouth. This way it, it ends up on the on the uh, recording. Do you know by the way that we're on the radio? How many of you know that? Oh, the talks are on the radio? Yeah. Yes. If you're ever not here on Sunday, you can catch it on the radio. The, the next week. This this week's will be playing next week. It's 104.7. Yep. Right? Yes. And we're also on, on Facebook online if you ever miss a talk. So okay. So we believe the ultimate goal of life to be complete emancipation of discord. We can all be with that one. We believe in the unity of all life and that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. The highest God and the innermost God is one God. That's probably the crux of the teaching right there. Right, that, that that power that, that created the Grand Canyon and all of this, this beautiful wonder here is what created us. One God, many forms. Mm -hmm. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need the middleman. We don't need the middleman. We can go directly to source. We can experience source, and we experience it to the degree that we are open and ready for it. And willingness. And willingness, yes, the willingness to experience that. Mm -hmm. right? Some people are just like, this is just such a foreign idea of a personal God. People are still waiting for a savior outside to take care of them, yeah, instead exactly. of realizing that that savior, that presence is already right here, wherever we are. You know, we don't need to wait for the second coming. We are it. We are it. It is here now. Always. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through the intuitive and spiritual nature of the individual and that any person may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. I love that. We believe in direct revelation. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is, as we go forward is this idea of us being a science. That means that there are laws that go with science. There are experiments that you do when, you know, in science, in science. And it is a way that we have of knowing things, right? There are ways of knowing. How do you know the things that you know? One of those ways is scientific knowing. It's observation. We can look at something and say that it is true or it is not true. Although we have to realize that we are limited by the equipment we have, right? Yes, we, we are limited by our equipment. If you want to see things that are teeny tiny small, you need a microscope to see it, right? If you want to see things that are infinitely huge and large, you, you, need, you need a different kind of scope to see that. We are limited by our physical being, by our bodies, by our equipment. And there's more beyond what we can see. So science is only one way that we know, observation. Another way that we can know is through reasoning things out, through logic, through reason. And we can sit here together and we can reason and logic things out and make sense of something. And we can know that way. But we can also know through intuition. And the reason we discount our intuition is because we can't share that with somebody else. 
I can't ask you to know what I know intuitively, mm -hmm. right? So we have, and then, then the other way of knowing is of course direct revelation, where someone just gets that aha moment and they know, they and they know. can't tell you how they know or why they know, but they know, they know. They they know. know. And those last two, we discount again because we can't corroborate it with other people. So we think that it's not as valid. But here, we talk about all those ways of knowing. And I try to, when I share an idea, a principle, to approach it from those different ways of knowing. So it makes sense from an observational standpoint, from a scientific standpoint. It makes sense from a logical standpoint. But you will know also from your intuition that yes, this is true, or maybe no, it's not. And then some of you may also have that direct revelation. So those are all ways of knowing, and those are all ways that are valid ways of knowing. So we believe that anyone can be a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with that knowing, who's clear, who's clear about who they are, doesn't have all that, that those filters and things that get in the way. And I think, again, kids are, are again, masters at that. Yeah, masters. Through. Yes, kids can look right through you. Kids are clear. They're closer to source. Mm -hmm. So we can learn a lot from children. We can learn a lot from our kids. Next, we believe that the, that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. So I use this picture of the potter, the potter's wheel. In this, that analogy, God is all of it. God is the potter, God is the clay, God is also the process, it's the wheel. Spirit is all of it, it's all of it. And there are lots of other analogies we can use. Right? That's a whole other talk, so. <laughs> Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. This idea makes sense that, that this thing we call God, spirit, creator, is all of it. So it's the law of attraction, that's what we're talking about. The it, is, it is the law of God. There, there are lots of, several. several laws of God. Several laws of God. But God is all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're talking about laws in physics, things like the law of thermodynamics, law of gravity, those are things that we are all subject to, and you may not know anything about it. You don't have to know anything about gravity to still be subject to the law of gravity, yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you say, well, I don't believe in gravity, I'm going to jump off the roof of this house. Mm. Gravity is not going to have an effect on me because I don't believe in it. Ha ha, ha, -ha right? Ha ha. ha ha. It doesn't matter if you believe in it or not. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. And the thing is, when we understand how these laws work, we can make use of them. Yes. When we don't understand it is when life doesn't work. It's when we when we fall flat on our face. Sudden stop. Sudden stop. <laughs> Sudden stop. Yes. So God is all of it. God is the potter. God is the clay. God is the wheel. God is all of it. We believe in the healing of the sick through the power of mind. We believe in the healing of sick through the power of mind. Now that doesn't mean that we don't go to doctors, mm -hmm. because we believe. Of course, that God works through physicians, God works through medicine, God works through plants, God works through people, God works through all of it. And if your intuition is telling you you need to go to a certain doctor, you, you need to take a certain medicine, or you need to not take that medicine, you need to listen to that intuition. Listen to that. We believe that all healing ultimately happens as a function of, of mind of mind, of the larger awareness of spirit, of God, of whatever you want to call it. And, and the word mind has a capital M there. So we're talking about the larger mind. Now this, this movement, not just our movement, but new thought in general, came about because of a lot of physical healings. The film wars, it was all started because of physical healings. So it is, it's ingrained, it's a deep part of, of who we are and what we teach. Oops, wrong way. And I think actually that idea of, of, of the healing of the sick through the power of mind is really a corollary of this, in that we believe in the control of conditions through the power of mind. 
So what is sickness but a condition? Right? What is, is poverty? All these other things are conditions that have come about because of our mindset, because of certain thoughts, ideas, behaviors that we have indulged in over the years. And what we have created, we can release, we can undo. We can undo. And that's part of what we teach here is how to do that. We believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of life to all. The Bible says that God is love. What if this energy, this, this awareness, this thing that, that we speak of that is the overarching thing that we are all contained within is love. It's love. And our task then is to release everything that is not that. Everything that prevents the flow of love. Every place that we stop that love from expressing. That's the truth of being. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, our own destiny, for we understand the life of all is God. I believe in me. I believe in you. I believe in this thing we call God. I believe that we are all here for a reason. I believe that we are all here with gifts that we were born to give and to use. To, as part of that evolution. And I'm very excited about what we're going to create together as a spiritual community here. And as part of the larger community of Centers for Spiritual Living. This is our time. This is your time. Again, King, if not now, when?